everyone and welcome back to the next episode of Beauty Angels. This is episode four. Thank you for joining us again. Episode four. Can you believe it, Linda? We have had nearly 200,000 views. That's amazing. And there'll be more by the time this one goes out. It just gets more and more and more and we're just we are honored that you send us your you know that you send us your questions that you can communicate with us we are we really are honored because when we started this this is exactly what we wanted to do and we now know that it's what you need and what we need as well so we're really glad that you like this as much as we do well we as the cosmetic detectives are going to look at everything skin today yes we have uh, Dr. Tracy Mountford, she's back, and we have a lovely lady called Sharina from Aesthetics, who is also going to talk to us about different sorts of skincare to Tracy, but we need to know how to look after our skin, don't we? We do. So what do you do? So, I mean, as a teenager, I had quite spotty skin. I was very, very self-conscious about it. Um, and the only thing that seemed to get rid of it at the time was sunshine. So, unfortunately, I used to sunbathe without any SPF on. And I'd be out there sometimes with baby oil on, which, you know, I'm quite lucky because my skin was oily that it hasn't damaged it too much. I always look after my skin now. Did you start used to sunbathe? No, I never sunbathed. You see, I was allergic to the sun. I used to have terrible prickly heat. Well, and I, you've got brilliant skin now yeah exactly i mean it's worked in the end hasn't it but the place i didn't put spf on was my chest me too and, and that is that because i didn't really realize it because i didn't go on my face now i used to walk around and that is kind of wrinkly and old and it's got some some brown spots but you've had some brown spots i you? did i was just about to tell you yeah um because of all this sunbathing when i was younger and, and obviously people don't put skincare i mean in in europe they're taught to put their night creams, their day creams from nipples up. We don't in England, we just do this bit. Yeah. Um, so their skin over there is much better than ours. But I had some really quite noticeable brown spots on my chest. And um, one, I used to get a necklace just to sit in it so that it would, oh yes, like that. Well, anyway. Can I get rid, I went, of, that, can I get rid of that? Yes, you can. I went to uh, Dr. Carides, um, he's in St. John's Wood, and he gave me the only treatment I think there is for brown spots, which is a laser treatment. I had Harmony laser done on my brown spots, but have a look. So today I'm gonna go to a clinic to ask about having these brown age spots removed. I do cover them with makeup sometimes, um, which comes off on my clothes, and they're only gonna get dark when I'm probably only gonna get more of them. I was a sun worshiper when I was younger and didn't use creams. I always put Factor 50 on my chest now, but it hasn't stopped them appearing. Um, apparently the only thing they can do for them is laser. So I'm gonna go and have a consultation and see if they can get rid of them for me. So I had the consultation and I was told I was suitable. They did a patch test, which worked, and I went back to have my full chest area treated. It's very quick and simple. Um, they just use a guard over the area so that the skin around it isn't affected. They give it a little zap. And the area becomes sort of dry and a bit like a graze, which eventually comes off well, I've had laser done on the main areas, which were a big patch I had here and here and here, and I had a very dark area here as well. And they've all gone. I'm absolutely thrilled with the results. Well, that is incredible. Linda, I'm on the way because I need to get rid of You see, I've got these brown spots here and they seem to, give, I seem to be getting another one, always in the same place. It's weird. I wonder why it always comes in the same place. I don't know, perhaps they breed. <laughs> Anyway, your skin always looks fantastic. What do you use on it? Well, you know, I chop and change. I don't use the same products all the time. I never had a facial until I was 40 either. And then I met a lady called Izzy Jaffa who did my first facial and I just fell in love with it. She started to, um, what's the word, educate me about how to look after my skin. And unfortunately, she educated me with La Prairie, which was very oh, no. <laughs> Broken bank balance. <laughs> because I love all of their products, but they are so, so, so expensive, but I still love them. It is a giveaway, isn't it? I think it gives away, it gives away if you're tired, if you're ill, if you're, you know, not, you're not feeling yourself. And also I think the skin is the main thing that shows your age. Yes. You know, if you look after your skin, you're going to remain looking younger. I mean, 
because you didn't sunbathe, you've got very, very few lines. Don't you, know, you find, I mean, people that have, you know, lots and lots of cosmetic surgery, for example, it doesn't matter how much surgery you have, if your skin isn't good, it's not going to make any difference. So it has to come from the inside. And it's what you eat as well and what you drink, staying hydrated. I'm not saying drink 27 pints of water a day, but staying hydrated. But I think the minute you notice that you're looking a bit dull in the skin, you need to give your skin a bit of a kick, then I will show you some products later that do just that. Absolutely. I'm so excited again to talk to our wonderful friend of the show, the fantastic and gorgeous Dr. Tracy Mountford. Hi, Trace. Hello, Debbie. How are you? Oh, Hi, Tracy. Hi. We have had so much reaction from the last time you were on, and we've had loads of questions on Instagram. These are actual yep. questions from our viewers. Um, this first lady said, what's the best way to get rid of hyperpigmentation on your face? Now, I think that's the same as those brown spots I had, is that called hyperpigmentation? Yeah, yeah. So you can get hyperpigmentation anywhere. You can get it on the chest, neck, face, hands, age spots, liver spots, as people call them. Um, we can even get patches of pigmentation. You know, that's sort of the, the mask over the top lip, often in pregnancy. And so pigmentation can come either, either as a result of hormone changes or your, your skin type or the good old one, sun exposure. Topical treatments can help. So skin treatments, normally medical grade, that contain either hydroquinone, which inhibits those, um, inhibits rather those pigment forming cells, stops them being so um, active. So hydroquinone containing products or even Retin-A um, and yeah. Tresinoin. Um, but if the most powerful treatments and often the most successful involve in clinic treatments, laser treatments, and there's different sorts, all kinds of different sorts that will actually thermally damage those pigment cells. They go darker, they go crusty over a couple of weeks, they go, they look much more obvious, but then gradually they lift off and disappear. But the most important thing is at this time of year, it's the first sunshine we've seen for ever. Be careful because treatments like that really need to be done in winter when we're not sun exposed. So best to do it beginning perhaps October and go in into a clinic, have them looked at and start your treatment. They're ready for the next spring, summer. Right. Now, Tracy, what I mean, neck and meet collage. I mean, now that everything's coming out, um, this is where I have the problem. Obviously, I, I've always I've never had my face in the sun, but my my chest is all wrinkly and horrible. What what can we do? Yeah, well, first of all, prevention, try not to, to get that too sun damaged. But of course, as we age, we're bound to lose collagen in our neck and decolletage. There's some great treatments now. There's some really good stuff. Um, one that we've really taken an interest in in our clinic is something called BBL, and that stands for broadband light. So in this laser, in the head of the laser, there's a hundred different wavelengths of different light. It'll stimulate collagen, which is good because it will smooth the decolletage gradually. It will attack those pigment producing cells as well. So it will even out any pigment you've got or freckling that you might have on your chest. It will also get rid of the red, any red veins on the decolletage and neck as well. But the interesting thing about broadband light is they did a study on this many years ago and found that it actually altered the DNA in the cells that they treat to make it younger. Wow. So it actually does alter some of the DNA in the cells that's treated and it's towards a younger cell. Oh my goodness, when are we coming in, Debbie? <laughs> now, so, and, and, and this is hard clinical data. This isn't just, this is proper published information. So actually, uh, it, that they, they coined the term that they actually is called forever young because they did a study over nine years and 12 years of people being treated regularly throughout that time. And their skin age hadn't aged at all. They'd stayed actually either better in terms of their DNA or at least the same, which is pretty impressive, isn't it? Do you know what I like about it? It's not crazily expensive. You know, to do a whole neck and deck probably would cost about £550. So it does need to be repeated for a course initially. But to maintain it and compared with other treatments for necks and decolletage, I think it's really reasonable. Lots and lots of women have written in and they want to know what they can do for the dark circles oh. under their eyes. Yes, it, tired eyes, big, big, big issue. As we get older, uh, here we go again. As we get older, our eyes sink 
back in our head. I'm sure you've heard me talk about this before because we have in our orbit fat. And as we get older, our eyes go darker and deeper into our head. So that manifests as a couple of things. Our eyes look smaller. And another way it manifests is these tear troughs, we call them, the hollowing in this area here. And it can make us look permanently tired. There's a lot said about drink more water, you know, don't smoke, don't, don't drink excessively, you know, don't indulge in alcohol. But at the end of the day, the best thing is to probably treat more aggressively than that. If there's a definite dark following, the only thing you can do probably to correct it is to put filler in the tear trough, which sounds really ouchy. It is so easy and experienced hands and it actually is relatively inexpensive again because it doesn't require a lot of filler. So all we're doing by putting filler here is reflecting the light, restoring the volume, and it can really make a dramatic difference. If it looks dark because of pigmentation, that's a different thing. And we revert back to the earlier conversation we had about treating pigmentation. Honestly, Tracy, that's so, so interesting. Um, now, the other question that is asked, as I think as, as much as that, is about rosacea. Seems to be a, a common thing with people of a certain age, doesn't it? It does. It's a real, it's a real dodgy one because it's hard to treat. Rosacea classically appears, you know, as red capillaries, a high colour, but it can be pustular as well. So you can get these sort of pimply, pustuly things as well. Yeah. Um, it can often occur numerous reasons: dietary, you know, genetics age, hormonal changes. A lot of women we see in clinic develop rosacea after 45, you know, to, as they go perimenopausally. And it's a real difficult thing to treat effectively. Um, lifestyle changes, all the things we know, you know, avoid too much sun, avoid spicy foods, um, drink more water, all the things we know. Alcohol will often trigger it. And I said, spicy foods are a devil to trigger rosacea. So avoid your triggers, get to know what your triggers are and avoid it. And then if it is genuinely a hormonal or perihormonal thing that you've had, then perhaps look at hormone replacement in some shape, way or form. But actually, again, laser treatments are pretty good at dealing with rosacea nowadays. Um, again, though, I don't want to keep flogging the same thing in terms of talking about the same thing. But something like the BBL laser is very good for rosacea because it can target the red in the skin and inhibit those pustular formations. The problem is to treat rosacea in clinic, it needs an intensive program. So treat every two weeks for a course of say four to six and then maintain the result. So I think with rosacea, it can be treated nicely with lasers. It can have a very pleasing result. It can really change people's lives to treat it. But you have to be really committed to avoiding your triggers, adjusting your lifestyle a bit, maybe having some topical products as well, which can calm down the inflammatory nature of the rosacea because it is largely inflammatory and then look at maybe laser treatment as well. A lot of people do get really good results with alteration of diet, so they tr see nutritionalists to try and adapt the diet accordingly. And also a lot of our ladies want to know what they can do for very dry skin. You know, you don't need to spend a fortune on very, you know, when you've got really dry skin. And I know a lot of my nurses say they, they you know, the French pharmacy and some of these pharmacies that sell really high quality wash poche and those kind of products, really nourishing. Aveeno, you know, cheap but really good products like Aveeno can actually be enough to just stop that very, very dry skin on our bodies, our legs, our arms. Skin will get drier as we get older. So we'll find that particularly the arms and the legs look much drier if you actually exfoliate gently and then use something really, really easy, like, I haven't got shares in Aveeno, I'm just declaring that now, but something like that, that you regularly apply, you will see your skin quality looking more healthy. As yeah. always, Tracy, you're absolutely brilliant. And the information that you've got in your head is just amazing. <laughs> we love having you on thank, thank you, you so much. and we'll see you next time see you next time girls thank you very very much
Bye. 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 I just love that woman, don't you? No, she's a she's a fountain of knowledge, isn't she? Yes, exactly. But it's very interesting. You see, uh, good skin isn't necessarily about good treatments. I mean, they help. What do you do, Linda, to keep your skin looking lovely? And it does. I mean, I just saw you a few days ago and you looked gorgeous in the flesh. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> um, I'm quite often asked about my skin, you know, especially on Instagram and things. They say, what do you use? Well, I do vary what I use, but I'm going to show you some of the products that I always use and I've used for years. Now, you know, I don't use expensive cleanser. I just use the Nivea Refreshing Facial Wash. And you know what? It's got vitamin E in it and it moisturizes. And you put a little, you know, a little double in the middle of your hand, rub it together with the water all over your face. In gets all of my eye makeup off, everything off in one foul swoop. There's no messing about in the bathroom for hours. I wash it and it's gone. Towel dry my face. And then I've just... I, because I used to have my own skincare range, which I've just run out of now because it's discontinued, um, I've been looking for new products and I'm trying this My Perfect Night and Day Cream. I've been using it about a week and I absolutely love it. I'm going to review it in a couple of weeks time and let you see what I think of it, but I'm really enjoying it. It smells divine. It's very light on the skin and it's easily absorbed. And then what I use um, underneath my makeup for an SPF, this is SPF 30, and it's drunken elephant. <laughs> That's not me, I'm not the drunken elephant. It's drunken elephant, and it's a tinted like base that should go underneath your foundation. A bit like a primer, but with a tint and with SPF 30. So I always got SPF on my face and I use it all the way down my chest so that I've got 30 on there as well. If I get you know, the sun comes out and you're sitting in the pub garden and you think, oh, I haven't got SPF on. Well, you have if you've used this before you put your makeup on. What about you, Debbie? What do you use? Well, I was saying before that, you know, sometimes your skin needs a bit of a, a boost. And this is the boost. It's Jam Marini and it's the uh, glycolic face wash. And it really, really goes boom. <laughs> I've been using this for about 20 years. I don't use it all the time. You can't use it all the time. It is the kick that you need. It's it's the most fantastic product. Absolutely. I've never found anything that matches it. Um, as we go on, this is another. Actually, this product was recommended to me by Dr. Mountford, you see. She said, why don't you try this? I'm, you know, I'm very, very, I'm a bad person, really, because I've got it's my stuck in your ways like me. Yeah, a bit stuck in the way. So I tried this. So it's Zoe and it's a vitamin C cream that you put under your makeup and it's just wonderful. And last but not least, it's what we all talk about. The most important product that you will ever have is your sunscreen. I use the Eve Long one. During the day, I don't wear makeup very often. And I just put the SPF on and I put a little bit of bronzer on and that's it. And this works. You're lucky because you've got a good complexion. You can get away with that. Yeah. But I mean, some of these products may not be right for people out there because I know people say to me, what do you use here? What do you use it? Well, everybody's skin is different. So you have to look and find something that's right for you and just do your research before you buy anything. Exactly. And, and try, you know, do, use loads and loads of things. I use loads of different things all the time. I have lovely favourite cleansers one minute and I don't like them the next minute. But I like things. I don't wear night creams. I don't like creamy creams. So, you know, it's just who I am. It's just peculiar then because I don't know any women that don't use a night cream. I don't use a night cream. I never have. You just wash your face and go to bed. Yeah. You're very low maintenance in that respect anyway. And, uh, but I'm high in others, darling. So our next guest is Sharina from Aesthetics. And she's going to talk to us about hydrofacial and other amazing things. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? We're very well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we want to hear all about what you can do for our skin. So Sharina, I yes. mean, we are about to have it, but we haven't had it yet. The wonderful hydrofacial. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely, Debbie. Well, you know, what you're going to get with the hydrofacial is essentially six facials all built into one. It's a combination of fusion between mechanical and chemical exfoliation. All right. What you have with mechanical exfoliation is you have this type of specialized tip. So it's got a soft edge to it. And through it, you have chemicals, light chemicals, mild acids, literally pouring through it, jet washing your skin. So wow. that's as, that's as bluntly as I can say, jet washing your skin. And with that, you're going to get removal of dead skin, debris, pollution, makeup, impurities, you know, fake tan, whatever it is. 
is all really nicely cleansed, jet washed with the baby chemical peel going through it. Step number one actually starts off with lymphatic drainage. Have you ever had that before? No. I think our viewers would like to know what lymphatic drainage is and how it works. Absolutely. Well, we have a lymphatic system within our body. It's the plumbing and circulation of our body. We make cells and then we break down cells. And then it's those byproducts that actually just get left in the system. And that can be formed as lymphatic waste, toxins, otherwise, as we know it. And it sits within skin cells. It just kind of sits in this space within our tissues. It can be in the gut. It can be in absolutely anywhere. And then if you think about the whole face and take the skin and put a whole jug of water in it, it gets really waterlogged. It doesn't look good, it doesn't feel good. But the other thing that also happens is when that system is blocked, it doesn't allow flesh, fresh new blood and fresh new circulation through it. And we need that fresh new blood and we need that fresh new circulation so that we can make new cells. Step number one, lymphatic drainage is kind of doing this. <laughs> Out with the old, in with the new. When we do it, we will you know, do one side of your face and we will sit you up halfway with a mirror so you can actually see. Oh, it's visible good. after just one treatment, like after you've just gone over it once. Oh, wow. How often do you, do you have a hydrofacial? Oh gosh, you know, every skin cycle varies from individual to individual. And this is the beauty with everything that we do. It's so unique to each person. But as a guide, if we have each skin cycle in a 20 or 30 year old going at about a four week skin cycle, by the time we get to my age and beyond, we're hitting about six week skin cycle. So I always say you want to have one within a four to a six week ratio, just for that real deep plans, maintenance, all of those things. If you really want to drive the skin forward, you want to go intense. I will go as frequently as once a week, every week for that skin cycle, and then go on to a maintenance monthly or six weekly. And you just see the skin take off. So with your skin, you've got beautiful skin, but it's dark skin. And I know it's different for you to look after your skin for, for say like me or Linda. So what's, what treatments do you use? I mean, you, do you use an SPF obviously as well every day? Do you know, I grew up without SPF. I grew up in a country like Malaysia where we weren't, we weren't learned, you know, we weren't educated to use SPF. If anything, it was coconut oil at the beach and off you went. No disrespect to my parents in Malaysia right now. But, um, but that's just how it was. Whereas now coming into the world of reconstructive plastic surgery, where you treat and see a lot of skin cancer, melanoma, we want to make sure that we prevent the skin cancer, number one, first and foremost, but also to prevent the excessive and accelerated signs of aging. I actually had a hydrofacial yesterday. It's suitable for all skin types, your skin color, my skin color, darker than mine. Um, so when you ask about those hydrofacial steps, they are those six steps, the lymphatic drainage, deep cleansing, exfoliation using this. We then use a baby chemical peel through your skin. It's called the glycel peel, seven and a half percent. And that's useful for all skin types because it's not too aggressive. So these kind of peels can then be escalated to different concentrations. So here you have a seven and a half, you have a 15 and a 30. We're constantly doing a different treatment every time a patient comes to the practice, never doing the same thing. And where we have lines and wrinkles just starting to form, the earlier you start, the better. So we have peptides and proteins uh, that we can infuse into the skin. And you know, for those of us who get dry lips, like I struggle with dry lips all through the year, Hydrofacial also have a specialized treatment for the lips, specialized treatment for the eyes. How, how long does the treatment take each, each time you come in? We will take 60 minutes. We will take oh, 60 minutes from to start to finish. And we like to show you all those steps. We like to show you half of your face uh, when you've had the lymphatic drainage. We will do the other half, I promise you. Yeah. I'm going to have my decolletage done and my back done. Great. Yes, That's I'm going to have, I'm gonna have a, I feel like I'm going in for a, a sort of like an MOT. <laughs> You'll be in there all day then, won't you? I, I would actually use that analogy. It's an MOT for the skin, the face, the body, you know, and now the scalp as well. So the nice thing about it, you now have different tips, bigger tips for the scalp. So you can see there's been an evolution in this type of high-tech facial. Like I had my first one in 22007 and I've had my scalp facial 14 years later. So it'll be interesting to see the results on your back because step number six involves showing you the gunk after your LED treatment. I can't imagine what it's going to be like in all those fake tans and it's probably still stuck in there from years ago getting all of that stuff out oh gosh get rid of all your blackheads and everything you can't reach or see on your back yeah well we can't wait to come in and see and thank you so much for joining us today 
thank you. You're thank very you. welcome. Thank you. You're just gorgeous. And we can't wait to have you back on the show as well. But thank you for coming in for this show. You've been brilliant. Thank you for coming. So much for your time, both. And lovely to see you. Look forward to welcoming you. See you soon. Bye. Bye now. Well, results of those fancy facials are absolutely amazing. But there are things you can do at home very cheaply. I mean, sort of once a week, I'll do a complete exfoliation of my whole body and my face, and then I'll put on a lovely hydration mask. And I use, the last one I use, because I like to vary it, they're very cheap from Boots or wherever chemist, about three quid. I used a Garnier one, which was really nice. In fact, that's the one we use for our photographs that you see all over Instagram. Lovely, actually. So you can do something at home. Is there anything you do sort of, once a month or once a fortnight for your skin aren't i a bad girl you are a bad girl, I'm a bad you girl. deserve to have beautiful skin i do because i just use so i'm a soap and water girl you know really i'm very very i use very simple things i know i'm very lucky with my skin but it's very simple and i just i do hydrate it but just kind of during the day i don't i don't like sleeping with creams on my face i know you don't like that and i don't want to i don't like at home facials i like somebody else to do it because i don't trust myself really you know i'll end up with a face mask on looking ridiculous but i know we've got a face mask coming up that we're going to do together aren't we we are that's going to be fun <laughs> But there are a lot of other things you can do at home and uh, we're going to go to we can't, talk about, them. We can't talk about them on this show we can do oh you didn't mean that sort of thing did you i didn't we're going to go to a holistic expert now we are going to find out what she's going to do for our faces so now we're going over to planet d follow me i'll take you to where you wanna be hi and welcome to planet d Today, I'm going to tell you about massage and how that can really help you and actually give you a little bit of a facelift. I know that sounds weird, but it's all true. First of all, I'd like you to take some oil, plant-based if possible, and start applying it from your neck upwards. And I'm going to work on the jowl area. We've applied the oil. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our thumbs, put them underneath here, okay, push up with the, the two fingers, these two fingers, okay? And we're going to put our tongue right at the roof of our mouth. Now you're starting to actually sculpt the lower part of the face. That's the mandible area, that's what it's called. That, that's the big bone that supports the lower teeth, etc., and the jawline. I would say do 20 of those a day if you can. Now then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually massage in circular movements from here upwards, okay, with these two index fingers. Right at the sides of your face and that will start the blood flow circulating in these areas of your face to give you that little zhuzh and push up here and out here. See what a difference it's making already. Pat the sides of the face, pat the cheeks, work upwards. Don't forget the breathing that I taught you last time. And now I'd like you to do a gurning exercise. So make sure nobody's looking because it's not very attractive. I'm looking around, nobody's here, right. This will stop this area from sagging. Gurning is good. Not very attractive, but the results are brilliant. And that's all for today. See you soon. Bye. Well, I'm gonna have a go at that massage, aren't you? Yeah, that would be quite good. I hope you've learned something today because I certainly learned a lot about skincare today. And thank you so much for joining us again. Yes, and we'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. But until we are back, we'd like you to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Instagram. And then we can answer all your questions. And please keep having those questions coming in, coming in, coming in, because they really are the best thing that we have. And we love it because we're actually talking to you. And, you know, you actually help us an awful lot. So uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.